My brothers and sisters, Yuji Itadori has done it. He has reached the peak of sorcery. And finally, finally, he has started to stop this cycle of Sukuna Kaisen because now it is most definitely a Yuji Kaisen takeover. Rightfully so, Yuji is one of the most goaded characters in the series, and now the battle is on his terms, and Jujutsu Kaisen is like his stage for the main act. There is almost no words that can describe the immense satisfaction that this chapter brings because for a long time now, brothers and sisters, this Shinjuku showdown arc felt like fighting a losing battle. However, all of this effort has an amazing payoff that may lead to some of the greatest moments in the story. In chapter 264, I honestly expected Sukuna to disregard whatever attack that the sorcerers are going to pull, especially this current Jacob's Ladder, and pull off a binding vow or save himself or something. However, with what went down now, that's not completely far off because Sukuna basically tanked the Jacob's Ladder and was strong enough to move within the beam of light. Sukuna caused rubble to fly up in the air and Sukuna would literally climb Jacob's Ladder in order to kill Angel. But there is a couple of points to keep in mind regarding this. This current Jacob's Ladder is not in a domain expansion so it does not only target Sukuna but Yuji and Toto would get hit as well. This curse technique is actually weaker than the first time around because Angel lost her arm and since Angel slash Hana coexist, Hana does not have as much physical strength as a sorcerer so losing her arm significantly nerfed the curse technique output. Jacob's Ladder itself can erase curse objects and eradicate curse techniques, however this beam of light as we have seen isn't exactly like a one shot technique. Especially since the curse technique output is nerfed, Sukuna is able to actually move within the beam of light before his body is separated separated from Megami. So while he still is able to move, Sukuna is about to land a black flash on Hana and kill her. However, Toto gets between them and takes yet another black flash from Sukuna. So yes, even Sukuna had to acknowledge our brother Toto is a true Jujutsu sorcerer. Toto has been one of the few characters or opponents to match Sukuna's intensity in battle despite his short actual screen time in the fight. And now he has fulfilled his role in shielding Hana and letting Yuji finish what they all started. This Jacob's Ladder light also seems to be able to damage normal sources like Yuji and Toto despite not being curses or being quote unquote evil themselves. So like Sukuna mentions, the light itself incinerates targets inside. Just like Sukuna, Yuji was actually able to move and follow him through the Jacob's Ladder beam. And Yuji holds nothing back as he slams Sukuna into yet another building and even tries to strike Sukuna with his soul splitting dismantle slash. It seems from that moment, Sukuna uses his own flying dismantles very briefly. However, more importantly, as a result of landing two black flashes, Sukuna restored his reverse curse technique output, so he was able to heal and refresh his body, including his crushed heart and his two left arms. Now that is very bad, because once his curse technique fully recovers after burnout, Sukuna will be able to use the world slash and the malevolent shrine. And this is the last thing that the sorcerers would need right now. On top of this, Sukuna overwhelms Yuji with his forearms in hand-to-hand -hand combat. In fact, Sukuna points out that Yuji will not touch his life until he recovers his curse technique, and at that point, he probably would have won. The narrator actually stated before that if Sukuna regained his severed limbs, he would crush all the sorcerers of Jujutsu High. When fighting Yuji, Sukuna doesn't need to use amplification or take any risks like how he did with Gojo. Instead, Sukuna can just overwhelm Yuji with strength. The only thing Sukuna needs to worry about is Yuji's dismantle strike. Unlike Sukuna's version, Yuji's dismantle can target the soul. So as a reincarnated vessel, that dismantle strike is fatal. But in order for it to be effective in the first place, it actually has to land. And with Sukuna regaining his reverse curse technique, Yuji cannot really even touch Sukuna. So to answer this, Yuji does the unthinkable. 
suddenly we get a flashback to when Gojo explained Domain Expansion versus Jogo in the Coffin of the Iron Mountain. And he points out, Domains consume enormous amounts of cursed energy, but they have advantages. The user's stats increase from their environment, and Gojo describes this like a kind of buff in video games. But another advantage is that a curse technique deployed within a Domain Expansion will always hit. So yeah, brothers and sisters, because of Yuji's switch training with Kusakabe, Yuji has learned the basics of barrier techniques, and now, after just awakening his curse technique, our MC Yuji Itadori can now use Domain Expansion. Something about this domain is very different. It's not like a shrine or even like a boxing ring like many may have predicted, but Yuji's domain is set at a train station. What's more is that Sukuna is no longer in his original hand form. He's not even in Megami's body anymore, but Sukuna has regressed back to a reflection of Yuji's form. And all Yuji has to say with no malice at all, not even a hint of aggression in his voice, but kindly Yuji says, all right, let's get started, Sukuna. Brothers and sisters, this is without a doubt one of the most hype moments to date. However, what surprises me the most is the complete shift in tone as Yuji uses his domain expansion. There is no visible anger or malice here. It's hard to describe, but it's almost like a breath of fresh air. Yuji is smiling for the first time in what feels like forever and happy to take this next step with Sukuna. This last panel is almost one to one with Gojo's airport scene in chapter 236 when he awakened. And Sukuna looks just about as confused as he could ever be. He has no clue what is going on right now. And after looking into the hand sign of Yuji's domain expansion, it is based on CT Garba Barizadva, a Buddha who enlightens others, a guardian of souls, a Buddha who guides souls who have no chance of redemption in their life. Or I should say, Siti Garba didn't want to achieve Buddhahood till all quote unquote hells were purified. This is especially relevant here with Yuji's circumstances. His role as a cog is to keep killing curses, or this evil that presides over this world. But earlier in the series, he also wanted to save people, to help them, to give them proper deaths. So what's better than becoming the one who presides over this quote unquote hell? And right now he's going to guide Sukuna's soul, which if you did not pick up on already, Sukuna is a completely irredeemable person. He's more like a demon than he is human. Unlike other domains, Yuji seems to have directly changed Sukuna's form to reflect his own. And it's more like he drew Sukuna into his innate domain, like his inner mind. So he has complete control over this environment. A lot of you guys may think that this is like the afterlife, which really isn't too far off given the context and meaning of Yuji's mudras in this domain. But think about the purpose of this domain altogether and what was just mentioned. Yuji was not really able to hit Sukuna with his soul dismantle strikes, but now within his domain, he can freely attack Sukuna's soul with a short hit strike and separate him from Megami. From the look of it, it seems like he already separated the both of them since he's in his Yuji Kuna form. So ultimately, I think this is where Sukuna's soul will receive judgment. What I really like is that you can tell Yuji has gained complete control over the situation. I never expected expected things to work out this way, but the confidence that Yuji is conveying makes me feel like he just cannot lose. Yuji is the one who can match Sukuna because he has an invincible soul. And now it looks like within this domain expansion, he brought the King of Curses down to his level. I don't know if perhaps Sukuna took on this form maybe because of soul resonance, almost like what Takaba did with Kenjaku or how certain events can happen to characters before their death. But now that this is Yuji's domain expansion, it most likely has something to do with the soul or aspects of the soul. As for why a train station, I'm unsure why Yuji would pick such a setting, but if he 
really is inspired by the monk Siti Garba, then Yuji may guide Sukuna as a traveler, and in this case, they would be like a passenger, and Yuji is the one leading the way. From the way Yuji acts, it really doesn't seem like he's about to do anything violent or even about the fight. It honestly seems like Yuji is taking him somewhere, but regardless, I think this will be where Yuji may finally exercise Sukuna. If Sukuna is in this form, what's to say that Megami's soul can't be here too? This is a uncharted domain expansion. We have to ask questions like, does it allow violence? Is Sukuna nerfed as Yuji Kuna? Is the sure hit lethal or non-lethal? I'm glad that next week we're going to answer all of those questions and more. However, since we saw that Gojo flashback, it's very likely that the sure hit of the domain expansion will be directed at Sukuna's soul, and likely it is the soul slashing dismantle, but we're just gonna have to see if that's true. I really hope that this is the final bout between Yuji and Sukuna. And now, since Sukuna has regained reverse curse technique, he would have the world slash and his curse technique output may return along with his domain expansion. And that truly is a horrifying outcome because at that point, you really can't win against that. However, if Yuji can force Sukuna on his terms, then they can win. And they just may be able to save Fushiguro as well. So from the looks of it, that just may be why Yuji is so confident. So brothers and sisters, what do you think about Yuji's domain expansion? After years of downplay, hell even Sukuna thought the brat had no talent. However, look at our boy now. He's the son of Sukuna's twin. He has strength as a vessel. He learned to strike and perceive the soul. He learned reverse curse technique. He gained the shrine curse technique. He has blood manipulation. And now he even has domain expansion. Without a doubt, these are the traits befitting the main character of Jujutsu Kaisen, one of the most powerful sorcerers of the modern age. And he's going to prove to Sukuna that he's not just some brat. He's not boring. He's not weak. He is the eye of the storm for the new era, the demon god, Yuji Itadori.